damn gary some serious gourmet shit. what flavor is this that's right it's the all hell medium roast private blend check out the geek grind coffee neurotic page for our other options <coughs> the decadent feathers of liberty vanilla infused flavored coffee or if you're looking for something darker try the dark roast fnt blend of the fellowship you know what just buy all three GeekGrindCoffee.com Use discount code NERDROTIC I hunted, Rob. I hunted for Toby Maguire's dick. Excuse me while I whip this out. <laughs> Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. Wait. I've got an idea. <laughs> My mind is a raging torrent. Flooded with rivulets of thought, cascading into a waterfall of creative alternatives. Oh, darn it, Mr. Lamar. You use your tongue prettier than a $20 whore. Nerdorotic.com Listen to that applause. Oh, it's back. <laughs> You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Uh, welcome to the Nerd Rotic Nooner because everybody needs a nooner, especially on Hump Day. It's Hump Day. Yeah. Mike, Mike, Mike. How you doing? <laughs> uh, chat, what's up? I only muted it for like a, a like a couple of seconds of that commercial. So it's it's progress, not Perfection. Uh, that's what happens when Garrett's not around. I mean, no offense, X Ray Girl. No, it's it's all good. I have no hands on the computer or through into the computer. I don't know how you call that. I, I just do what I can. Okay. Uh, what's up, Jake D? How's it going? Uh, More Dante. Did I say that right? 69, 69, Superman 82, TPPT. Uh, CD, how's it going? Eric K and his wrench. Uh, Rooster Cogburn is a member. What's up? American Comics Company. How's it going? Uh, today's going to be a big day in Hollywood, folks. Uh, Disney's earnings call is in a few hours. And if I can, I was invited on uh, a live stream. I'll keep it a little bit of a mystery for now. But then I'll let you know later. That uh, I think I can make it. I think I can make it. Uh, I think it'll be fun. Uh, but yeah, uh, force majeure is 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 happening in some areas already. Uh, actually, it was August first, I think, when a lot of those deals could be terminated. And we have hit day one hundred of the Writers Guild of America strike. What are we to do as a society? How will we go on without woke Hollywood? I don't know. Somehow we will survive. You know who's always surviving? Chris Gore. Chris Gore's Hell a survivor. Yeah. What's, going on? What's going on, brother? Uh, uh, Gary, I'm, I'm a little out of it today. Okay, uh, I, so I it's a day that, that ends in why? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, uh, no just uh, haven't had my, haven't even had half a cup of coffee. Oh, yet, dude. So. I will wake up during the stream, I promise. And I'm excited Keep to be again. Oh yeah, and I'm excited to see you in Texas this weekend. That's right. Anime Matsuri is around the corner and I realized yesterday after being on the Real BBC on this channel, I'm like, I did not tell anybody when the panel was. <laughs> I'm an idiot. No, you did. I did? You did. Well, I didn't tell them that it was at like what room it's in and stuff cuz on the Oh street, yeah. The so details, but you I, told him when. You will get the deets in this episode. 
you will get the details. Uh, and then um, there's going to be a big YouTuber section where uh, we're going to be signing stuff. Chris will be at my table. Chris will be at my table. So, uh, Or will it be Frank? Or Frank. Well, it, you yeah. know, it depends on how much he has to drink. Because he turns into Frank the Tank after a certain amount. <laughs> Let's yeah. go. Oh, we need to do Let's Go Streak. And that needs to be a clip for Frank the Tank gore. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll turn into Frank at night I'm like a vampire. <laughs> That's right. Oh my God. Um, I'm excited that you're coming out. You're going to be on Normal World uh, on Thursday yeah. Uh, yeah. on Garrett's show. So that is going to be great. You're going to see. Have you met Dave Landau before? I have never met Dave Landau, but I feel like every person from Michigan should know each other. So. Uh, yes. So you I guys are going to swap Detroit stories for an hour. Oh, That'd yeah. be fun. Yeah, Detroit, or as I like to say, uh, San Francisco's future. Uh, yes. Future. Um, Very much so. You know, Detroit, Detroit had a good music scene back in the day, dude. Great music scene, yep. but a dead city. It is literally a dead city, and the future for... It's something to look at for the cities that are currently dying, like San Francisco and Los Angeles, sadly. It is oh, uh, it is. I can't remember what... I can't remember what TV... It's like... Glancing my memory, help me chat. There, there is a sci-fi novel or series or show or something that talked about like the the cities being repurposed into like gardens or something like that, and they just failed. I can't remember what it was. A comic, it could have been something, oh, but wow. uh, that's probably. Uh, uh, or they should just be walled off. You know, I watched Twisted Metal, and after the apocalypse, they walled off the cities, and that's where it's authoritarian. But that's where you know um, all the nice stuff is, and I, I, I would think it would be the exact opposite. <laughs> I think we'd wall off the cities to keep like escape from New York. I think that I think that's far more real uh, if the apocalypse happens. Uh, Twisted Metal, did you see it? It wasn't bad. I don't it was know why okay. I don't care. I just it's a very good battle racing game that was fine on the playstation the early i don't know if it was one two or three but one of those or yeah, probably yeah. All of those. and uh you know whatever i you know i i don't how do you make a tv show out of that i just they I, they they pulled it off uh, really? there's that the, the, dude there's a there's a total woke freaking intersectional forced in lesbian relationship like in the middle of it that's just like eye rolling but uh it was it was just kind of gory and fun and and sweet tooth was freaking great <laughs> it was great dude so uh the murderous clown that's that's who stole the show but uh, i mean it was fine watching it on the free version of peacock <laughs> basically or the commercial version the three dollar right. version i still don't know if i'd pay that much i already had it for other reasons, but uh, yeah, it was fine. It was fine. I'd never played the game, I, even though I'm a massive gamer. I mean, I play exactly uh, <laughs> nerdrotic gaming. You got to start that channel. Yes. Uh, I I just don't know why I don't care. Maybe it's just being flooded with too much brand, you know, content, branded yeah. content. Yeah. You know, so it just uh, you know, I, I guess maybe I'll throw it on at some point. You know. I, I'll watch it on my phone on the way to the hotel when I fly into Texas. There you go. Uh, it's it, I'll have 30 like, minutes in my dude, car. it was. I, I know you got mad at me for not watching RRR, which you should. <laughs> I will have seen it by the time I see you. You're you're not going to have time. I don't see. believe that. I don't believe I'm going to probably watch, watch it in the car. <laughs> <laughs> you're watching the car. No, no, you no. can't appreciate what? it for whatever. whatever. It you see how big this phone is? I can I can watch it. <laughs> oh my god. Yo, watch um watch <laughs> a Spine of Night. It's like 90 minutes. It's a cartoon. It's a heavy metal That cartoon. I want to watch. Uh Just watch that, man. You'll love it. Yeah, time got away from me. My office is almost done though, so I can do a tour. That's but Spine oh, of Night even has like some feminist stuff in it. But I don't care when they're naked with a sword. You can go oh. feminist all day. Yeah, I don't care. I'm just I'm or not even listening to what they say <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Whatever. They can sound they sound the like the, a teacher from Charlie Brown <laughs> at that point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as long as they're oh, naked God. with the swords. Oh. Wow, 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 wow. Naked is Whatever. the strongest mute button I've ever heard of. 
for men. <laughs> Your truth, whatever you said, don't care. <laughs> oh my god, we're also predictable. Um, oh my god, I found the most copious of cope articles this morning ever, which we're gonna go over. Uh-oh. I'll tease it. It's it is such a reach. It's got something to do with the last Jedi. Uh, the access media just cannot let go of the fact that people hated that fucking movie and it killed Star Wars, and they are still trying to like say it's good. It is. Uh, it is wonderful. It's a wonderful article. So we're gonna go over that. We're gonna go over that. Uh, but uh, first, hello, X Ray Girl. Hello. Um, I wanted. <laughs> uh. I can finally fit into this Britney Venti shirt. So I'm wearing Bimbo Power. Um, thank you, Britney. Um, in, in solidarity, I guess, with Bimboness. And uh, yeah. Really I good. need a Bimbo Power shirt. What's up, Britney? She only has small and medium. So what? in girl sizes, I don't think you're going to fit into one. How are the dudes going to? Yeah, that, that's not going to look we good on a, me. We need a Himbo Power shirt, Britney. We need a Brittany. Himbo Power shirt, oh my God, Brittany. Mark. We need a male line, okay? <laughs> What's up, Brittany? Brittany making friends on the internet. That's why I love Brittany Venti. She's oh, my God. I would okay. never want to piss her off. Oh, my God. <laughs> she's, going, uh, she's going after the manosphere. I think we should, Chris. Say, Chris, we should start the dadosphere. Yeah. The dadosphere. I think it'd be the and most it'd be just awesome thing. Dad jokes. <laughs> well, the thing is, at the core of the manosphere stuff, there are. I, I think that men are lost and men are directionless. And I yes. think there's a reason the manosphere is absolutely is, is you know so popular. So, and some of what is being said, it's like, oh, that's that's a good point, or these are like that's something I had to learn on my own, or whatever. But it goes too too far. It's it's too, like the, too hard in the paint feminist. it goes too hard in the paint on a lot yeah. of stuff all right uh yeah it, it i'm not aware of every single person so i can't really make a judgment i'm just aware of a couple uh but uh the first thing my dad would always tell me is uh don't brag act like you've been there before yeah i agree with that um but if this puts it into context for you, Brittany played a very um, bimbo ops takedown. Yeah, take bimbo ops takedown on the Gossip Girl slash Dynasty level. We'll what? That. Yeah. What? If you've watched those shows before, it yeah. Anyways. Yeah, yeah. Oh well, um, well, I've watched Dynasty. I did. Yeah. Uh, and Gossip Girl. My wife watched Gossip Girl, so I, I'm aware. Yeah, yeah, just just go watch Britney's video when you get a chance yeah. if you if you care to do so. Yeah. What is But what I is like the, the dadosphere with just dad jokes. Yeah, it's just, just dad, dad jokes. Yeah, I love dad jokes. <laughs> but my uh my favorite piece of advice I told my son uh this is before he went off to boot camp to become a marine. Uh-huh. I said to him I said don't be an idiot and don't do stupid shit. Yeah, that dude. <laughs> <laughs> that was my, so that's, that's my model for life uh, that those are great words to tell a kid yeah like well the stories out of boot camp were pretty interesting uh but uh yeah no it was it uh i think those, i think that's a that's a good piece of advice for anybody mm-hmm. don't mm-hmm. be an idiot don't do stupid shit there we are yeah, also that's kind of you're not that special is that, something that people should get in their heads too. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, yeah. My my dad gave me that advice. I just didn't listen, and then he <laughs> <clears throat> did what all dads do. When I was uh, after all that, he's all I fucking told you so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Dad. I had that moment quite a few times with my parents, so they really do know all. Yep. Especially wow. uh, Alan. Yeah. X-ray. Dad. Yeah. Sorry, Dad. You bring dishonor to this family. <laughs> All right. So the the writer strike, we'll start out with that, and then we'll get to the cringe article in a little bit. Uh, here, I will put the link in the private chat, X-Ray Girl. Thank you. Um, the WGA calls 100, uh, day 100 of writer strike, a milestone of shame. Uh-oh. A milestone of shame. Uh, 
for I want to say the armpit every every time I see the AM. PTP. I just want to say the armpit. So I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to do for the armpit. Uh, but optimism for deal remains. <laughs> I, I, Chris, I wouldn't be that optimistic considering yeah. everything I've heard. Things like we're going to license uh, Korean content. We're gonna we're get, uh, we have enough content already to get us through the next year. They could ride this thing out for a long time. A lot of people are still saying it's going to end September, anytime in between September and November, depending on the actors or the writers. Um, but that's going to d- still delay everything for a year. I, I don't know what kind of optimism they have because the one thing I completely agree with them and the actors on, Chris is transparency. I'd love to know what the numbers are for these streaming services. I'm sure, you know what? I'm sure some shareholders of these companies would love to know them as well. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you want to know the truth? Wouldn't the advertisers who'd be paying on the ad tiers want to know, the, do they get the numbers? They must get some kind of numbers. Are they real numbers? Are they honest numbers? Or are they a little fudged here and there? That's the question. That's the question I have. I think everybody has. So I, I'm on their side for that one for completely different reasons. Chris, uh, you have a live stream coming up later today. Yes. And uh, you have a guest coming on. Yes. Uh, you want to talk about that for a second? Yeah. So at 1 p.m. Pacific time today on Hollywood on the Rocks, which has kind of turned into Film Threats news show. Um, we do our reviews on Friday, but my buddy, who his name is Jim Agnew, he is a WGA screenwriter a guy who's worked you know forever he 20 more than like 20 years ago he was a writer for film threat this is after he was in a punk band which kind of you know was successful but not successful enough to make a living at so he was kind of bopping around it's like the screenwriting thing i'm gonna try what what punk band um god i forget the name of it but you know he he you met him he looks like a musician so uh, but anyways so he just started writing scripts and he's worked with on, on movies with Nicolas Cage, among others. Uh, he directed a, a small indie sci-fi thing. He just produced a movie back East. He, he comes back. He's like, man, I'm pissed. He goes, I want to come on your show and just tell it like it is. Uh, I just want to tell you. And he's told me some things, you know, like behind the scenes of stuff that's been going on that I can't repeat. He can talk about it, but yeah, he'll be on the show today. So basically, right from the horse's mouth, a WGA writer who's like, this is nonsense. The industry is, he said, he just said to me, the industry is dead. We're creating a new model to make money because these people are idiots. He goes, I'm surrounded by idiots. They're asking for things that are ridiculous. Uh, it's, uh, a, I, I, I can't, I'm not going to speak for him, but he's told me some stuff. I'm going to wait. Uh, but he's like, I want to be on the show and I want to, I want to say all these things. So that's uh, right after this. Yeah. I mean, they're, you know, they want 18, 18 karat gold toilet seats and immortality. That's the kind of shit they're, they're asking for like kid stuff. Right. Uh, they're also asking for <clears throat> health benefits and correct me if I'm wrong. Back in the day, wasn't it the union that offered the health benefits? Yes. It was the union. Yeah that offered the health benefits. That's what you partially paid into. But then it turned into the employer offering the health benefits. And <clears throat> and in California, there is California care. Now, that uh, it sucks. It absolutely sucks, but it's there. Um, so I think he's right. It's what we said all along. This is a, being a writer is a gig economy. It is not right. something like, you go to work from nine to five as a writer. That just, it's not a model that works. It works like what? Uh, you know, yeah, sure, there's been hit TV series, but that's one out of, uh, at this point, 100. That's one out of 100. And there are thousands of writers, uh, some who are striking right now who haven't worked in five years. And uh, of course, but on the actor side, uh, Billy Porter has to sell his house. Uh, Billy Porter. Oh, I saw that. Billy Porter, who's worth five million dollars, supposedly, <laughs> has to sell his house. Oh, God. Yeah, I saw that. I, I, that's, that's crazy. I, I think maybe you didn't manage your expense. You know. I'm guessing. I was about to say, as a, 
as a writer after what three months of not having work and you already have to sell your house it sounds like you were really bad with your money yeah right like maybe get a more modest home uh this is why i just i learned i learned this uh you know you live below your means i i'm not stressed i'm not yeah. stressed i i live in a modest place in pasadena walkable to everything very happy i don't worry about money you know uh i try not to buy stupid shit but of course i do um but uh yeah i don't know billy porter that just seems like you're bad at managing money or the people you pay to manage your money did a terrible job and gave you bad advice and, and also this, this is not a good time to sell a house no no, no one's, buying. No uh, one's buying unless they're from china and they're buying with cash that's uh, not a joke either I, it's way. not a everything joke in, everything in california is being bought for cash by the chinese yep and everything in texas is being bought by cash by californians <laughs> that's, yeah. that's a terrible yeah. thing i could afford a house i could afford a house in texas i was looking yes you maybe could I'll, yes you could i I'll, could uh... <laughs> so uh we we use that op that when, when covid happened uh melissa and i recognized pretty quickly that like oh shit's going down we need to get out like that's you you guys know the story most of you do so yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what we did. We used that opportunity to get the hell out instead of waiting for somebody to come in and save it or waiting for them to end COVID. Um, we waited two weeks. That was enough. Uh, and uh, we started the process, a very long process of getting the hell out. So we're not ever in that position again. And and we're not because we worked our, you know, our, you know, I'm in my 50s, obviously. So I worked a long time to get where I'm at now prior to YouTube and all this stuff. And yeah, you know, there's no excuse. You're worth $5 million. You shouldn't be selling your fucking house. That's pathetic. It's fucking pathetic. Yeah. And I don't feel sorry for Billy Porter, by the way. Uh, as far as writers are concerned, you know, it's just being realistic. Uh, the, some are already like, you. there might be a time where you're in Burbank and your Uber driver wrote on Breaking Bad. So <laughs> that might yeah. be. First of all, not a joke, Gary. I mean, you're saying this. All so many people I know that are in entertainment, even friends of mine that are successful actors, in between gigs they bartend, because you don't know when. I mean, you might work three months of the year and make a substantial sum of money, but you spread out, you know, hundred, hundred fifty grand that you made in three months over a year in California is not great. And I even had a friend of mine who is a screenwriter. And um, God wrote like a couple of really amazing screenplays that have never been produced, including one that you would love about Doctor Who. It's okay. So this buddy of mine wrote this screenplay. God. So it was set before the David Tennant um, Doctor Who and whatnot. And it's a bunch of Doctor Who fans who missed the last shuttle from San Diego Comic-Con to their hotel. So they have to walk all the way to their hotel and they're dressed like they've got the long Tom Baker scarf and all that stuff. They're dressed like Doctor Who fans. And it's based on the Warriors. So they keep running into other groups of people. They run into a bunch of guys dressed as Klingons because at least <laughs> previous, previous to the new era of Doctor Who, being a Doctor Who fan, you were a fucking nerd. You were at the lowest tier of nerd were people who were Doctor Who fans pre the modern era of Doctor Who, right? So, right. So you were looked down upon. It was like, nerds made fun of people who were doctor who yeah right so, so they they're just trying to get to their hotel but running into different groups of <laughs> that's hilarious oh that's so good god it's such a i read the script is so but it's so whovians come out to play yay <laughs> yeah exactly all that stuff it's like it's just based on it so so he's wrote and sold screenplays he's also wrote and not sold he's written things on spec that didn't sell so he'll sell a script but he has like a for this one project he had a co-writer they sold it for a half million dollars five hundred thousand dollars seems like a lot of money yep step one you split it with your co-writer so that's step two taxes <laughs> step, step two, step two then, manager and agent could buy 20 percent of that yeah right so that's oh now you're so they got about sixty thousand dollars each <laughs> no well it was like in the you know, over a hundred, but okay. he said, I would have made more money if I was a manager at McDonald's based on the time that he spent <laughs> yep. years, which was years. So you really got away. And also like my friend, Dan Mervish, 
who is a successful independent filmmaker. He makes a movie about every two or three years. His advice to independent filmmakers was to do what he did. He married a doctor. <laughs> so his <laughs> wife, Someone with stable. His wife, his wife is a pediatrician. She makes very good money. She has stable income. He does not. So he does projects and his projects make money. And still, because of the instability of the of incoming revenue from from films, I mean, look, I'm making movies on the side because I know it's not a it's not at least unless I've got like a bunch of projects like the successful producers I know, like guys like Ted Hope, they they make like seven movies a year and then five of them fail. One does well and then one hits. And that's the one he makes money on. Then he also makes sure to protect himself. So for the movies that didn't make money, he doesn't personally uh, you know, take a hit for that. So that's a successful producer, Ted Hope, the guy whose Substack I just sent you in the in the private chat. Um, mm -hmm. He did a, what movie you might know, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, was one of his films. Yep, among others. But like, so it's a weird business where you're constantly having to learn on a business model that's that's constantly changing. And so my buddy Jim is coming on uh, Hollywood on the Rocks after this just to just talk about how effed up the industry is and how he wants to create a new model. He started his own uh, production company where he would just wants to do like uh, low budget sci-fi and low budget action. And, well, you know, that's the future. Of stuff. That's the yeah, future. I, 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 many are going to call it decentralized. You're going to call it independent. That's what it's always been. It will just yeah. be breaking up Hollywood. That's yes. what, that, that's what it'll be. And uh, I think that's great. Uh, there will be a lot less security in that, though. There there won't be. Yeah. Uh, by the way, as I said before, at the starting of the strike, it's a false sense of security. That's what your union offers you, a false sense of security. Right now, your union has you not making money. Deals are being broken. And when you come back, there won't be as much money. There just won't be. Right. Uh, be, we're finding this out. I, I you know, who knows what happens on the Disney earnings call. It's good. It'll probably be a giant commercial for Disney. Uh, I doubt they're going to have like regular people call in. Um, uh, and I uh, just saw what Perry shared in, in discord. Sorry. Distract me. Hi, Perry. How's it going? See you tomorrow. You. Um, and we might bring that up. Uh, but no, no, it, it's, it's, it's reductive at this point. Uh, and, and by the way, they should have taken this up before COVID when everybody had a little more power, right? Uh, we were shutting things down, but they were still making stuff during COVID, right? The reason we're watching stuff right now, and, it, and, and some of the reasons it feels a little disjointed is because it was made during COVID because they were allowed to make all this stuff. And, and I talked to a WGA negotiator saying, yeah, we knew this was coming down the road, but we kicked the can down the road because we got a sweet deal during COVID. Okay. Yeah. So I, I would have thought it would be better to maybe deal with that while everything was shut down any way rather than shutting down everything else again, affecting the movie theaters, which are doing great right now. And now they're not they're, they're going to go right back to before and we'll probably lose a movie theater chain. I'm not going to say every one, but we'll probably lose one. Because they're really expensive to maintain. They're insanely expensive to maintain. You've noticed that uh, most movie theaters, they used to be filled with employees and now they have like minimum staff all the time. Well, now they're encouraging like AMC. They're talking about possibly some bankruptcy, which would suck. Cause I do the a list, but now they encourage you. You just order your refreshments on the app. I just pick up my popcorn with my name on it. It's just sitting there. They've tried to, they're trying to automate as many things as possible, but I actually like AMC and their model. I mean, I'm there probably two or three times a week to see films. I saw Oppenheimer a second time. It's it's better a second time. It's, really? It's better. You, it doesn't feel as disjointed. It, it, I felt disjointed watching it the first time. The sec, On second viewing, it's a much better film. It just, it sucks that I even have to tell you. There, and I have a list of movies that I'll I take think your like word for better, it. that almost require you to see it a second time. I'll take your word I, for I it. I did enjoy it much better. Take my word for it. You don't have to go, Gary. I'm not going to go. I, and I still stand <laughs> I still stand by all the things I said. Like, it still has all those flaws, but now I kind of see through the flaws. Yeah. Kind of like with a lot of- It's a biopic. You know, you, I, 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 knew, yeah. like, I knew the history. That's the thing with biopics. Like, I'm into history, guys. <laughs> so, like, I, yeah. it's, it's, it's where he went with the subjective stuff. I was like, okay, whatever. It's fine. It's fine. 
I was expecting a little more science. Didn't get it. Uh, editor's note on uh, one in a series of stories marking the 100th day of the WGA strike. The writer's strike has hit day 100, the point at which the last walkout by Writers Guild ended in 2008. So in 2008, that really long strike that affected that affected the industry so much that when I went to work there in 2010, it had not recovered and there was a lot of bitterness towards the writers. I will also point out that I lived in a house with seven other guys, six of them I never saw, maybe in passing once because I worked a night shift. But one of the guys was the, uh, he was, he coordinated the writer's room for Big Bang Theory and he was renting a house with a room with seven other guys. <laughs> and uh, it was right across from Sony. I was right across from Sony. Like you could walk to the Sony post-production building uh, where I was living. It was re really weird. His name was Gary, too, by the way. He was a cool dude. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that, that, was, that was back then. So it, the writer's strike had already ended by now. They haven't even gone to the table. Chris, they just they almost had a meeting. And then they they didn't have the meeting. <laughs> so they couldn't even talk. Uh, that's the news. That's the news. We almost met. We almost met. <laughs> uh, it's a significant junction. One that Chris Kaiser and David A. Goodman, who co-chair the WGA's negotiating committee, call a milestone of shame uh, for the armpit. Uh, it also comes five days after the latest attempt to get both sides back to the negotiation table. Uh, that meeting between the WGA West chief negotiator, Ellen Stutzman, and her general counsel, somebody in, of armpit, uh, Carl Lombar Lombardini, and her team wasn't as productive as many as ho would hope. Yeah, it didn't happen. I would call that not productive. <laughs> A meeting that doesn't happen. While the WGA late on Friday night revealed that there was no agreement on resuming you know, we, uh, no agreement on resuming no negotiations for a new MBA and the caustic note to members saying that the uh, armpit playbook continues. They, uh, there were reasons to be more optimistic than at first glance. If you ignore the furor around press blackouts and trade leaks, the WGA stated that it was willing to engage with the companies and resume negotiations in good faith to make a fair deal for the writers. The armpit was also willing to increase its offer on a few writer-specific TV minimums and discuss AI. There is a great desire to forge a deal with uh, official talks, according to one studio insider, and don't be surprised to see another invite extended to resume such discussion soon. Yes, yeah, now that force majeure is uh, in effect, I think, uh, I think that's what they were waiting for. Uh, blah, 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 they're still on strike. I'm not going to read this whole thing. It's like, honestly, the the details and the business ins and outs uh, bore the shit out of me, personally. Um, I, I, I would rather see them focus on uh, just making better stories. Uh, I don't know if that's going to happen with a mandated minimum in a writer's room. The writers are trying to blame the producers for their bad writing, uh, particularly on Disney Plus shows. That's, that's the bottom line on this. Um, I would say they're both at fault. Equally. I would say they're both at fault. Uh, nobody's forcing you to sign a deal. Nobody's forcing you to do this job. You can quit whenever the fuck you want. You know? Uh, but this, it's the political capital you're always worried about. It's the politicking. And it's that's why it's, you know, even in the good times, it was a miracle when we got a good movie. Uh, yeah. Considering how much, how many fingers are in, you know, get, how many people get involved, how many cooks are in the kitchen. It's, uh, it's, it's bad. But it's just gotten so much worse because they've commoditized this. And you can't do that with art. You just can't. It doesn't work. It doesn't work, Chris. You can't make art into a widget. But Disney Plus has certainly tried. They have certainly tried because that's all they have is they have content. They have widgets on their streaming service. And that's why they paid $212 million for Secret Invasion. Dune. Dune 2 did not cost that much. Well, I'll, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why because uh, Denis Villeneuve very smartly keeps stays away from them. I mean, even Christopher Nolan, he um, got. I remember talking to Wally Pfister at a, a film festival. Wally Pfister is the cinematographer that uh, Chris Nolan has worked with often, um, and he did The Dark Knight. He he said that.
Chris has a house and like behind his house is a garage and he works in his garage. It's just like, like the walls of the garage, this extra separate, separate house it, are just filled with storyboards. And he had the storyboards for the dark Knight in there. And he was telling me, I mean, he didn't give away anything huge, but was just excited. Yeah. That and he was doing, he wasn't like renting out a studio or using studio space that cost him money. He was just doing that shit at home. Cause it, like, you don't need to do that. There's, that, that's another problem with Hollywood. And they tried to deal with this in the last strike, Chris, if you remember, yeah. there's so much redundancy. There's like too many line producers. There's too, the catering staff is too fucking big. They need to like get a little more lean and mean that that was one of the big issues that they did. They, they didn't resolve. And it actually got worse. There's too many effing producers. How many producers were even on Star Trek Picard season three? They weren't involved, thankfully, but it's like 20. And he's 20 fucking producers on anything. You know, a lot of it's like just giving him credit. But there are there, like you need one, maybe two, maybe two on a TV show. At most. At most. Uh, it's it's there's a lot of excess. So I see what you're saying there. I get it. I get it. Although, you're, you know, to some, you're not considered a, a professional YouTuber unless you use your Section 8 money to rent a house and go get some bitches. Uh, but I guess I'll just never be that. And I'm fine. I'm fine with that. Some Eric July lore right there. <laughs> Eric July lore. Uh, so I'm trying to see real quick. What's this? I'm gonna. I'm Perry's gonna, video. Perry's video. I'm gonna. I'm gonna watch it. We'll see. I'm. I don't even know what's going on here. I'll. Uh, uh -oh. I'll, I'll give you the link. I got it. I got it. You got it. Uh, yeah. You got it. Let's put it up. Right. Yeah, I've no this is I'm going in cold. I have no idea what this person's going to say. Let's figure All it out. All right. Title says The Daily Show writer explains why WGA members are ready to strike for a while. In 100 days, how how much longer do you feel like uh, you know, you and others are prepared to to stay on strike? I mean, one thing that's not going to work out well for the AMPTP is they've trained people like me to be freelancers on the side anyway. Um, in between my last two writing jobs, it's, it was so hard to get hired. I've gone two and a half years between jobs before. So I'm already like picking up freelance work where I can, not doing any truck work. Um, everybody that I know has had some, for, some kind of side job uh, for a long time. So I think like economically we're prepared to strike for a while. If I had my brothers as somebody who loves writing comedy television, I would like to go back to work tomorrow. But we can't do it without a fair contract. So they're already got side jobs. They already got side jobs. The Some, thing is, there are just too many. When it comes to hiring. So it's already a gig economy. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's on. already a gig economy. But for the producers, it's like, if not her, then, you know, 20 other people that are in line for that job. It's a glut. There are too many. You know, the reason the DGA, they wrapped up things really quickly not a lot of members and guess what most of their members are working they're all working directors and and working by choice you know making making a movie every couple years right like that's what you do and you make enough money to survive and that's why the dga is a much easier organization because they're they are very 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 picky about who is allowed into the dga same thing with the um, asc the american society of cinematographers which are basically in effect, you know, in line with the DGA, these these organizations don't have to strike because they don't have these problems. No, because they, they are particular who they bring in because it's a correct. highly skilled like being a cinematographer is a highly skilled position. Like, you know, yes. even people who could technically get their brain around it will not be good at it. It takes it takes technical skill and talent and same with de being a director, too. And, and you uh I think they should probably be that way with writers too, right? I mean, you know, yes. don't let everybody in. And there's a lot of there's a lot of cinematographers who they make their bones. You know, they're they're made to do a bunch of indie movies, features. You don't just get into the ASC. Uh, you you it, it's it's a rigorous process, and then it's other members nominate you to be to be added. You know, to be included. And then once you get that, then you get, you know, you're a member of the Cinematographers Guild, you know, the AS, 
it's it's a it's a big deal to be in that. But there are a lot of working cinematographers that are not in in uh, that organization because they're they're working towards it and and they are particular when it comes to SAG. SAG is the worst. I mean, what percent? I think it's such a small percent of actual actors who work with any regularity to make a living. And then the rest of them are bartenders. Oh yeah. Like 160,000 members. I mean, what? Huh? It's insane. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. (laughs) That's ridiculous. Um, I, I, I agree. So let's get some super chats and we'll get to the cringe article. It'd be fun. I, I skimmed it. So like, well, it'll be surprised, but this is, um, it's funny. It is funny. Is the access media um, still mad about Last Jedi? <laughs> and they try oh, to. Oh, comp- no. They, it's so funny. Uh, Vimorian for 20 Chilean pesos? I believe so. Hello. So at the end of next FNT will be. Uh, so this and next FNT will be as usual, or are there alterations? Uh, uh- FNT will be on an hour later and it will be shorter. That this might week. make everybody happy. I don't know. <laughs> this week, yeah. This week. I don't know. I'll, that next week it's normal. Next week it's normal, normal time. But um I don't miss the show. Uh it, we're going to we're not going to mess around with introductions. We're going to get right into the show, which I mean, <laughs> but it's going to be a, a little bit of a shorter version because I have a, a panel uh beforehand. So, can you do you have the app Available. If not, then I can look it up. Um, for oh, the panel? For the panel, yeah. And oh, I don't have it on here, but I can. It's on the app. It's not on the website, which is kind of. Eh, oh, whatever. well, then I can't look. Yeah. It so <laughs> I got to look it up on my phone. Uh, it's a uh, 230. Yeah, 2 o'clock. So uh, at Anime Matsuri, the Friday night's panel, Friday night tights panel is, at, is in room 361. And it's from 2 to 3. As you know, 3 o'clock is our start time. So uh, we're going to start FNT at 4 unless I get there a little soon. I'm going to see how quickly I can get from the con yeah. to my hotel room. Uh, and that's set- central time in case people that don't know. That is central know. time. That is central time. Yeah. So it's, it's starting an hour later. Uh, but if you're at Anime Matsuri, our panel starts at 2. It's in room 361. I will post that on Twitter later. And, of course, on the uh, community section here. But thank you. Uh, Chris Chris will be there. Chris will be there. We'll get him on Friday Night Tights. The drinker's going to be there. It's going to be fun. Drinker's going to be at Anime Matsuri. Drinker. That's insane. The critical <laughs> effing drinker is going to be there. That's going to be rad. And then we got Chrissy's show Friday night. So hopefully that sells out. Yeah. Uh, Magnum Norris for $20 says, Fat bastards say, I love gold. <laughs> I love gold. Uh, Magdal Lisker, did I get that right? I think so. Magdal Lisker for 50 British pounds. That's proper money. It's very expensive money. I just exchanged a bunch. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be sad going there. It's going to be really sad going there. And the VAT. Oh, watch out for the VAT. Uh, the Pedro and Pedro, the, okay. So Pedro, we'll put it, the Pedro and Pedro protecting cants of Hollywood can all burn for all I care, folks. I'm literally sick in that. Let's face the truth now that all know and say nothing. Um, that is certainly a holdover for me too, that I cannot agree more on. They were getting up to areas of, it wasn't just abuse to women right when they started getting to the abuse of men and then beyond that children you noticed it shut down pretty fucking quick isn't it weird so let's just go with the men the abuse of the men a couple of men talked about it it made news for a couple days didn't get talked about you want to know why that was shut down immediately the uh alphabet mafia shut that down immediately because that would be it would be going from straight man objectifying women, which really fits the whole Me Too narrative, to mm-hmm. oh, gay men doing the same thing to men, women, uh, men, and gay women doing the same thing to women. Couldn't go there. No, we couldn't. 
couldn't go there instead of just like, hey, it's people abusing people, right? And also, let's let's be real about one thing with the Me Too movement. There was a lot of people who were completely okay with the uh, arrangement, all right, until they weren't. Uh, so uh, uh, a lot of people called uh, Harvey Weinstein uh, uh, God. So let's not forget that either. And then, of course, when it gets to the children, of course they're going to shut it down. Because that would destroy the entire industry if the truth got out on that. Hopefully someday it does. Hopefully someday it does. It's a problem there. It's a, but it's also a problem in our schools that we never hear about either. So uh, there's that. There's that. In our public schools, by the way. Public schools. Uh, Brent- yeah, Gary, it's, very, it's very curious that there hasn't been a a version of me too. When you look at some other cases and things, I don't know about the thing with Brian Singer and whatnot. I think there were just some who, who knows with that, but I always think where there's smoke, there's fire, Mm -hmm. you know, you know, so, um, and, uh, innocent till proven guilty, but yeah, no, I remember being at San Diego comic-con and going to a oddly a Warner brothers party and Brian Singer could not get in with his entourage because they were all under 21. Mm-hmm. He had an entourage of boys that were, he couldn't get in. It was just like, I'm sorry, we can't let these people in. It's a bar. It's 21 and over only. And he was with a bunch of young men. So there you go. Yep. There you go. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, no, yeah. no. You, that, that's a great point, Chris. Uh, it, it's something that stopped dead in its tracks. And we all fucking know why, as our super chatter pointed out. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. Not like intimate details, but if you've worked in the town long enough, I'm sure you heard of a party where uh, a rumor of a thing happened. I'm sure everybody has a story like that. Or they've been at the party. And they might not have been down with it, but they didn't say anything because, well, we don't want to rock the boat. These are powerful people. Uh, The Alphabet Mafia is real very real in in uh and, and it's just a term for for Hollywood who controls Hollywood the alphabet mafia for sure um and it's and you know it, it's it's the, their perspective is well it'll ruin our movement so it's best to keep certain details secret to not ruin the overall movement which is bullshit which is utter fucking bullshit but that's the perspective of a lot of people so uh uh, if you got to lie to keep your movement going, it ain't a movement. It's a narrative. Uh, Brent Wolf has gifted 10 Nerdrotic memberships for $50. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, Blackguard 4 has gifted 20 Nerdrotic memberships for $100. Hail. Duke Devil 95 has gifted 10 Nerdrotic memberships for $50. Another thing. I would like to point out to Hollywood is you have a bit of a reputation, Hollywood. This is this is not for the audience. I love you guys. You guys know this stuff. So if this is for the many people from Hollywood who are watching the show. None of them are, but whatever. But it, this is directly to you, Hollywood. You have a bit of a reputation problem, a brand problem right now for a lot of reasons. But one of the things besmirching your brand is the pedos. So you really need to, I would say, Maybe take a little extra effort. Go the extra mile to try to rid yourself of them. That would just, whether you like it or not, perception is reality. And a lot of people, even people who are fans are going, oh, yeah, that shit goes on in Hollywood. That's that's not good. And it is definitely affecting your bottom line. Uh, go, like being Disney, being a family brand, going directly against the family is affecting your bottom line. Uh, so you that's why many here are like, burn. Just burn. Don't care. Uh, because believe it or not, we can live without you. We can live without you. There will be other forms of entertainment. We'll make our own. But if you want to shake that reputation a little bit, I don't know, maybe expose some of the people who are committing these uh, atrocities, which is what they are. And don't be cowards. It's interesting, Gary, because Hollywood is not the only industry. You know, there's independent film is the decentralized media that 
uh, big tech is, I, mean, I hope big tech has nothing to do with independent film at all. You know, they, they've been such a friend. They've destroyed the music industry, destroyed, you know, the destroying in the midst of destroying the entertainment industry. They've broken hotel business with Airbnb and uh, taxis with Uber. With so Uber? I, yeah. I, M- I, music I, with Napster? I mean, that dis- that completely busted up the, well, it busted up the music industry and now it's like, it's one just gobbledygook of fucking pop music, which is terrible. Well, what, what big tech seems to do is come into an industry, uh, find a way to devalue what this industry produces, and then also discovers a way to siphon profits from that industry into some headquarters in Silicon Valley where yep. they've created an app. And that's, this is I just sort of seeing, seeing on a longer timeline now, we can all look at this. And we were all seduced by, well, the phone is free. That's it. You just sign it to your contract. Yep. Convenience. Uh, the first phone, yeah, the first phone is free. So big tech, I have a tweet I want to put out about this, right? Compare it to the Butlerian Jihad. Uh, if you're a Dune fan, you know what that is. Um, it was basically the war against um, AI and machines that nearly destroyed civilization. So what's interesting about Dune uh, I'm going to bore you a little bit, Gary, is that it's on a long enough timeline that we surpassed robots. So it's like 10,000 years in the future, right? It's, yeah. No, I think that's really smart, by the way, uh, because yeah, like, it makes it more fantasy. It makes it, I mean, it's still sci-fi, but it's got a, a fantasy element to it that uh, is very cool. I do like that part. Yeah. The way Frank Herbert designed it, he was looking at all the fiction that his, you know, his peers were writing in terms of sci-fi and it was spaceships, aliens, and robots. Yep. And Dune doesn't have any of that. The spaceships are just like, well, we just go from point A to point B and we fold space. Yeah. So it's not even that interesting. You're not like, there's no like, you know, going to warp speed or any, any of that, you know, stuff. It's, uh, it's, we're just going from one planet to the next. We do a bunch of drugs and we fold space and we fight. That's, uh, exactly. That's good. Did I get it right? Dune fans? Yeah, yeah, it's it's all good, but but I just find that really interesting, and we're seeing now. I mean, you know, you're in your fifties, Gary. So am I. Like you've seen, you remember before big tech. You remember the nineties. You remember when the world was fun, and we weren't trying to, you weren't attacking people over stupid shit. And I didn't actually know the political opinions of celebrities. I didn't care about them then. I really care even less about them Uh, now. Yeah. Agreed. It makes me dislike them in particular the writers. There, oh, sorry to interrupt, but there was always like there, there was yeah. like uh Danny Glover. There was always a couple of of um uh, Sean Penn. There was always a couple right. of annoying fucking celebrities, but it wasn't all of them. <laughs> it was just right, a couple, right. you know. Sorry, now it's all of them and the writers like I don't give a shit what the writer of She Hulk thinks about anything. Right, you know, you didn't you didn't deliver a good She Hulk show. That's all I care about. I don't care what you think. So, um, you didn't impress me. And and I so just looking at this on a long enough timeline, you see, big tech is not the answer. No. And even even worse, what social media has done to children, what social media has done to kids, is horrible. Worse than smoking. Worse than. The, the, when you look at just sort of the the you know mental illness, the lack of just happiness when it comes to kids being sold this thing of like you're doomed, nothing you do matters because the world is going to end. Um, I think we're fine, but you you got to push back against all of this. And I think also at least a few good things that that I think mainstream media has been exposed, right? Yes. And, and, you know, we just know from certain the, narratives that have been pushed on a mainstream level, you know, was that, were they always doing that? We just didn't know. The curtain is lifted, which is why I believe, and you've said it, and I, uh, Robert Meyer Burnett has said, authenticity is the currency of the future, because that, that's, where, that's where the eyeballs go. Once you're, once you're awake, and I don't mean woke, I mean awake, yeah. and you, you become aware of all of this stuff in your environment, one, it doesn't affect you. So mainstream media can throw all the propaganda at me that they want. I'm not affected by it and because I'm curious because I grew up with the mantra, question everything. And um, 
it's a good it's a good model to live by. Uh, and that's Gen X. That's Gen. That's the Gen. I I love I love all the memes about Gen X, and you see like all these like God. There's one that was so good. It's like a quadrant of like four like Gen Z, millennials, boomers, and they're all fighting and mad at each other. And Gen X is just like looking, taking a drink, and smiling. Yes. It's, it's like, you've seen that one. Yep. That was- I, I, I like the one of the baby with the tattoo drinking a Coors. <laughs> <laughs> that's Gen X. That's good. Yeah. Like, yeah. Whatever. I mean. We're kind of responsible for some of this stuff too. Some, true. some, some of our in our generation did not stay true. We'll just say so. Like, let's not. Yeah. You know, we have many millennials in our uh, audience. I, I. It's not all your fault. Some of it yeah. is. <laughs> and Zoomers, we get mad at the Zoomers for like, well, millennials. <clears throat> but um, you're right. You're right. Uh, I, I, you know, now we have kids. Uh, well, I can't get. I can't really go there, but um, back in the day, it was like the parents would drink, the kids were on drugs. Now the ki- the parents are on drugs, and the kids are chopping shit off. Uh, and the parents are completely okay with it because their kids are a purse puppy. They're an accessory, and they're not a kid. Ah, oh, that, that disgusts the hell out of me. Uh, and Hollywood's all for it. They're all for it because they think it's the cool thing, that what they really are is a bunch of idiots just following, just trend followers. They, they know they're, they're so vacant between the ears so many of them uh and that's having worked there and met a lot of people i'm like my god the first thing that hit me chris when i got to hollywood is is there is an insane amount of money in the control of complete morons it's yes. astounding <laughs> how much money is is being controlled by freaking idiots oh because like even you know when i worked there the the money that technicolor wasted was unbelievable and maybe because I was coming at it with like small businessman perspective, because I counted every fucking penny. But um, damn. Uh, so well, I'll read this, and then we'll get to our cringe article real quick. Uh, Luke's game room for forty forty nine ninety nine. Uh, Melissa just brought me in some coffee, by the way, and she's ready for anime Matsuri. She she wanted to show me her straw her nails look like strawberries. <gasps> Can I? Oh, never mind. I'll she'll take. I have her take a yeah. Have her. I'll she'll send you a her. picture. <laughs> She's all ready for the anime. <laughs> all, all ready for the Japanese cultural appropriation. We're, we're down. She's down. I'm giving her the, the Asian if, card. Okay, so if you're into like you're an Anglophile, <laughs> if you like British culture, right? So what's the term for? Uh, is it weeb? What's the term if you're in the if you're white and you're in Japanese culture? Is it weeb? Is that what weeb is? I pretty sure that's what weeb is right. Mm. Um. I don't know. Hey, Gary, would love to get a shout out and your take on my Twisted Metal video. Well, I'll take a look at it. I I agree. It's a seven out of ten. Not many people did a video, so I'd love to see it. So it's Luke's Game Room. Check it out. Luke's Game Room. Give it a seven out of ten, but was surprised at how well it respected the source material. Uh, That I don't know. I, I I could tell, like, this must be from the game because I have no idea what this is. Uh, still haven't seen the movie theater. Still haven't been to a movie theater since we saw Rise of Skywalker back in San Francisco. Oh, oh you were, God, that's, that's right. You were with me. You were with me. A, a few of us went and saw it in a little theater at West Portal, which is right across the street from where I started this show, a Starbucks where I started this show. I did my first. Uh, show live from a star. Well, not live. We recorded it in a Starbucks. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> we recorded Gary. it, in a, and we talked about Batman and Superman or something like that, and and the Arrowverse. <laughs> you should do a reaction video of you watching. Make it like maybe when you hit a million or something, watch you react watching your first show. That would be a. Am- I did. I did some videos on the Film Threat YouTube channel when I used to do TV back in like the late nineties and early two thousands. I did a bunch of TV shows. I did this show for FX called the new movie show. I was a regular talking about movies on the X show, which was their ripoff of the man show. Then I did, I did a bunch of stuff. I even did a game show for IFC. So a couple of times I've like shown videos of myself talking about stuff. What's weird is how I'm exactly the same now in terms of opinion. That'll look the same. But it's I'm I'm just like oh I'm just a smartass and with common sense when it comes to evaluating. Yeah, yeah dude, you have not changed a fucking bit. Uh, yeah, I've been watching but, you like before I knew you. I was watching you for years. 
Oh my God. So Gary, please do a reaction video to your first episode or an early episode. I might. When you hit a million, that it, that, oh God. Maybe a million. Uh, by and the way, by the way, uh, Dan Vask, you hear those footsteps? You hear <laughs> those? You That's me. That's me right behind you. I was about to say, you should actually do a reaction video of Dan Vest singing your song. Oh, I will. Well. Oh, <laughs> I, I, I'm going to do it like TikTok, too. I'm just going to point and do stupid. Ooh. Oh. Or the dumb thing where people, what is this new trend where people, I always find out about a new trend. The NPCs? Uh, like Odin's Men or some show like that. No, the thing where they like eat stuff. or like Oh, yeah, the words. NPC. Is that what it is? Hot dog oh. yum. Oh, God. That's the women's wait, wait, final wait, form. Extra girl, what is it again? <laughs> NPCs? No, but like, what What could you describe it and kind of by example? So people, oh. like, on, oh my God, on TikTok, they like throw money with like a sticker and then they just react to that. And they, they eat they, it. They eat it. Yeah. And well, like, it's it like an ice like? cream. What is it? What does it sound like? Mmm, hot dog yum. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so you want to get really creeped out? It sounds like a little child reacting to something. I think it's fucking gross. It's I think really it's weird. fucking creepy and gross. Everything creepy, about it yeah. is creepy as fucking gross. That's me. I liked when Az did it because it, it was funny. Yep. Az is on <laughs> Az, Az is on I love Az is on Cameo and he's like like So Az, I love you, brother. Did Cameo come to you or did you sign up for Cameo? <laughs> I need we to know <laughs> the answer to this question. <laughs> but as is as is on Cameo. Go check him out. Get a yep. Cameo from As. Um yeah. As is on Cas. Hilarious. I wonder how much his Cameo is. I'm going <laughs> to find out. <laughs> yeah, go find out. Go find out. Oh my god, let's order some crazy Cameos from As and then play them on FNT. I, I, uh, as <laughs> I love the as as an, no as and I are currently doing a project, uh, a skit. We don't do many skits, right? But like as came up with a really fucking good one, like a Ooh. banger, and like he wrote it last night, and it's done, and it's fucking great. Now we uh, we actually need you involved, Chris. We need sure. X Ray Girl involved. Uh, we're sure. gonna involve some other YouTubers. Okay, and you'll see. Happy to do it. You'll see. All, all, uh, you, all you'll need to do is record. A sentence. I'm gonna say, quote unquote, a sentence on your phone. That's all you need to do. It's okay. Real simple shit. Uh, here, we're gonna promote as his cameo before we continue. If that's okay. Go. Uh, beat up YouTuber, professional shouter at clouds, twenty Canadian for a personal vid, four dollars to message. I've never actually been on the site. Before, twenty so. Canadian. <laughs> as. I know that's like fifteen American. I think that's awesome. That's fucking so, awesome. So there you go. Oh my god. <laughs> Wait, can we play this for <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Wait. Hi everyone, it's Az here from Hill vs. Babyface, decade veteran on YouTube, survivor of the meme wars, now here on Cameo for your blessed entertainment. I will happily inspire you, I will happily encourage you. And I will also happily dump your useless girl or boyfriend, <laughs> should you so wish. <laughs> or maybe you don't want me. Maybe you want her. Thanks, getting fired for J4. Or maybe her, whose name we don't mention anymore. Uh oh. Or you could just try and see what you can get away with. I'll see you soon. Take care. Oh, oh my God. God. That's amazing. <laughs> That's a great promo video. Good job, Az. Wow. <laughs> uh, Douglas, uh, no, Doug Alkeen for $20 says, Chris, I rented Attack of the Dock on Prime Video and it was great. Do you get any money from renting? If not, where can I buy it? And support you the most. P.S. Thank you for documenting a fantastic, informative show for me. Oh, wow. Well, uh, yes, I do get money from that. That's our distributor. Um, I mean, you know, it. We, we get a percentage of it. So, yes. So, thank you for that. If you do want to buy it, I do recommend the Blu-ray. You can get it at Attack of the Doc. That's D-O-C, Attack of the Doc.com. Or go to shop.filmthreat.com and check it out. Like, I'm, in fact, we're getting down... Uh, 
we I mean, we've got less than a thousand left. So we'll see. I don't know if we're going to do like a, a it might be out of stock for a bit, but I would order it as soon as possible. But yeah. Uh, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I don't know what. You or you, you could buy stuff. some at Anime Matsuri if you're yes, there. I'm, I'm bringing a limited number of copies to Anime Matsuri. I can sign it. I'll be giving away some posters too for free. Yeah, uh, me too. If you want to buy the movie, it's uh, 30 bucks. 30 bucks. There you go. Nice. Nice. Uh, Matt Faxine for 20. Canadian pesos. Uh, this whole thing with Me Too and the pedophile rings and this whole idea of underage boys and underage girls getting touched by uh, people of power, it really reminds you of the Catholic Church and what happened there. Yes, and as I pointed out many times, Matthew, the um, the boys and gr- the uh, uh, the Cub Scouts, not the Cub Scouts, the Boy Scouts got hit. The Catholic Church got hit. Isn't it strange that schools, that this never happened in schools or in yeah. Hollywood? Isn't it? It's so Isn't that under the rug. Fucking odd. Because the predators tend to go where kids are, and what better place to find kids than at a school or uh, lure them in with fame and fortune? And look at how many Hollywood kids are completely fucked up. Yeah, it's weird. Weird. Okay. You know what's also weird? Here's the article. It's less serious. Yeah. That's a serious subject. That uh, needs to be talked about. And again, Hollywood, you want to shake. And listen, the one flaw in this argument is the Me Too thing started because Harvey Weinstein was a piece of shit. Guy was a piece of shit who did fucking horrible things. And people let it go forever. Forever. But then it got co-opted. The movement got co-opted like to where like there were women who were legitimately abused and men. And it got co-opted by people who are abusing women and men to usurp power. That's what Hollywood does. So, I mean, again, Hollywood, you have a rep that you earned that you need to shake. How do you do it? That's your fucking problem, honestly. But it needs to be done. It needs to be done. You can't, you can't quit going, oh, you know, getting upset, being called groomers. Well, you fucking earned it. Look at how many creeps you've protected. Look at how many pieces of shit you've protected. Same goes for the teachers' unions. Okay, on a lighter note, let's let's have a little laugh. Here you go. The headline should be enough. Uh oh, it's Screen Rant, so expect some like a uh, uh, retardation squared. <sighs> Barbie's backlash and review bombing proves it's 2023's The Last Jedi and shows why shows why the movie's great. <clears throat> Okay. What? This is stupid already. How they're making this connection is ridiculous. I mean, I see it like, like also the, the Barbie has gotten mixed reviews, and I think it's very fair. I saw one of the best reviews I saw of Barbie. The best was Danica, Comic Book Girl nineteen. She did a review of Oppenheimer and Barbie. Yeah, she did. She, she really. She didn't completely rip apart Barbie. Like, I felt the same way. I'm like, oh, there's some good stuff here. And then there's some stuff that makes no sense. And the movie is hypocritical in many ways about a lot of things. But her video was one of the best because she is pushing back against a lot of BS that is fed to young women about uh, about the world, let's just say. And Barbie deals with that. But I don't see these as being similar at all. I watched the video and it was great, by the way. Oh, you saw her? Oh my I God. did. She doesn't put out videos as as, as often, you know, but she's. Often, I like Comic Book Girl nineteen. I do. She's Danica, great. I'm, she's good. I am meeting her on Monday. We're talking about. Uh, I'm trying to help her with her Akira documentary. Oh, good, good. So I, I'd together. love to see it. Yeah, so she's going to relaunch that. She got an angel investor, so she's starting on the movie. I just want her to make sure she spends that money wisely and give her a bunch of context. Cool beans helpful info so i'm always trying to help people out with that stuff so uh um, barbie and star wars the last jedi share a surprising number of similarities really um okay there's girls in it (laughs) yeah there's a there's a woman lead that's one similarity um one uh 
is a girl's brand that adapts a girl's brand. The other is a boy's brand trying to turn it into a girl's brand where they completely destroy the male character who created the bo- who helped create the the boy's brand. I, I don't see the similarities there. I, I really don't, unless it's Ken's story, uh, which it's not. But let's let's see let's see how they cope. Um, the Last Jedi still sucks. Uh, I think feminism being in Barbie shouldn't surprise anybody. That's that's where I, as I said before, fucking fill Barbie with feminism. I don't give a shit. Just keep it the fuck out of Star Wars and Star Trek and Star. It's too late for that, obviously, but you know, that's the way it goes. Barbie is one of 2023's most critically and commercially successful movies, and has nonetheless suffered a backlash. And that it has proved surprisingly similar to 2017 Star Wars The, uh, the Last Jedi. Barbie is in part fueled by Barbenheimer, a uh, phenomenon thanks to re- meme culture, by the, by the way, uh, releasing the same day as Oppenheimer. By, okay, whatever. Is this written by AI? Uh, despite all that, uh, the box office has hit a billion dollars. I didn't think it would hit a billion, but I, I, pr- I was pretty sure this film would be very successful and make money. Uh, despite all that, it hasn't entirely been smooth sailing for Greta Gerwig's film. Barbie has been review bombed on some sites. Uh, it has a Rotten Tomato audience score of 84%. And they're saying it drops to 74%. <laughs> I'd say that's pretty accurate. Yeah, I'd say that's fair. <laughs> so that's a <laughs> fucking stretch. Uh, criticisms have included... Talk of being woke and anti-men and the churlish response to the movie, especially given how Barbie tackles things, uh, has similarities to Last Jedi, which divided and still divides the Star Wars fandom. Star Wars The Last Jedi, for better or worse, clearly based on the reactions and certain point of view. Oh, they went there again, didn't they? That's uh, that's uh, That's been debunked a thousand times. Was not the movie anyone expected nor wanted <laughs> following uh by the way just real quick uh barbie barbie made a billion that's that's fantastic uh how is star wars done since the last jedi financially right. it has been nothing but diminishing returns to the point where it is simply a category on a uh, on a streaming service that hasn't turned a profit that's that's just a fact uh, the Force Awakens, which did a great job of bringing the franchise back, no, it sucked, uh, mm-hmm. and creating a new generation of heroes. Really, really, the really fast track in that Ray movie, but also was close uh, to beat for beat remake of A New Hope. That's true. Uh, instead of more of the same, which many likely expected, The Last Jedi deconstructs and retcons uh, with the core facets of Star Wars. Uh, this is the be- this is best seen in the use of Luke Skywalker since it deals with both Luke Skywalker the legend and Luke Skywalker the man. Demyth is it demythologizing? Demythologizing. demythologizing the former in order to really show the humanity good and bad, the heroic and the failures of the latter. This is some uh, postmodernism nihilist bullshit that's why star that's why it didn't work and that's why it broke star wars so uh, i agree they they deconstructed luke skywalker yes they did and it failed and it failed uh it runs throughout the movie though the notion of the skywalkers being all powerful and all important is flipped with ray being the one the resistance wins quote unquote uh, come through needless sacrifice in big hero moments by intervening those, indeed, the kind of heroic actions that define Star Wars that are mistakes making up. So, like, how is this like Barbie? Did we deconstruct Barbie, or did she just get a vagina? Uh, yeah, deconstructed vagina. Although, well, now that I say <laughs> or it out constructed loud. constructed a vagina. Well, I think. <laughs> maybe uh, the point of Barbie, uh, Ryan talked about it, was supposed to be like these are both idealized worlds and the real world sucks, but you just got to live in it. Uh, it's a fucking terrible message, by the way. Uh, the real world is what we make of it individually. That's, that's, I'm sorry to state the obvious. That's what I do here on YouTube. 
and it can be either good or bad, and it's mostly due to our own choices. It's about personal responsibility. Uh, Barbie does not have the exact same weight in those terms of movies, but nonetheless, a piece of monoculture that everyone knows and many feel they have an idea of what it is. Okay, well, I, I've never given Barbie much thought, Chris. Have you? <laughs> I mean, you have a daughter, but... Uh, uh, I have not. I well, have... no, I mean, like that, I mean, we talked about it. We talked about it on FNT. I mean, you know, uh, I, well, it's, it's a weird mixed bag. But I agree with Az that, you know, and I, I, was, I like his video where he talked about she kind of unintentionally didn't make the point she thought she was making. That makes sense. Yeah. I, I, ultimately, I think it was uh, it was a movie that tried to be irreverent and fun and got buried under its own preachiness that I think Greta Gerwig horribly constructed to where people can interpret it as based, which it is not. Which is not. Uh, Greta Gerwig and many others have come out and said this is a feminist movie, and I fully expected it. It's Barbie. It's where it belongs. Uh, Barbie is supposed to be the ideal. She's everything, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but that's not true of the life, nor of the true of the doll. Uh, Gerwig's Barbie could have been uh, a fun ride that coasted on its IP like The Last Jedi. It interested uh, in going much deeper into its hero. Um, big difference is whether you liked Barbie or not, you follow Barbie and it didn't completely destroy the character of Barbie. Uh, and in The Last Jedi and The Force Awakens that, a pre, uh, that preceded it, Luke was barely in the fucking either of the movies. And when he was, he was just shit. He was miserable. So I see no comparison whatsoever. I see a massive cope from the access. I'm not going to read this whole fucking thing. Jesus Christ. Um, Kylo Ren is Ken. <laughs> Kylo Ken. Kylo Ken. <laughs> Kylo Ren. K, K, uh, K Ben Ken is K easy Ren. to see as the toxic male villain. villain. <laughs> K Ren. <laughs> oh, no. Wow. <laughs> it broke Gary. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, no. It, you know, it's it's a mystery why so many people have come to YouTube and followed uh, their favorite creator or became one, you know, <laughs> because the access media is fucking retarded. <laughs> oh, God, I can't do it. Kalo Ken. <laughs> so... And there's your mistake. You made your villain a toxic male and not a villain. You made it a male feminist and intersectional feminist idealized toxic male. Your straw man. That's where you failed. Instead of making him a villain, a person. Like, why did Han Solo's son turn to the dark side? Plus, you repurposed something from the EU, which was a much better story and simplified it to beyond recognition to, to fan fiction, to fan fiction. Good God. <laughs> Screen rant. Uh, the access media can't die fast enough, guys. It just can't. That's enough. I can't do it anymore. K. Ren. K. Ren. <laughs> I saw this headline. I'm like, oh, my God. They are still, their vagina still hurts a little bit from The Last Jedi. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I, all I know is Hollywood will copy this, and we're going to get, like, a bunch of uh, toy adaptations now, and they're probably 99.9% .9 of them are going to suck balls. I could see this being, like, an anomaly, kind of like Wonder Woman 1 was. Yeah, uh, I I see this as 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 Wonder Woman, uh, and and to the point where I you know it's a rumor, but I would absolutely believe that Disney will try to market the Marvels like they did Barbie, and just the problem is they can't because they're on strike. But if they do, oh my God, that's going to be great. We're going to get so much wonderful red carpet 
gold <laughs> that I cannot oh, yes. fucking wait because because the actresses from and and the only, only one of them can pull it off in my opinion the Miss Marvel actress but they're going to try to be fun and charming it's going to be hilarious and they're you know what they're going to go right into we're three powerful women and women doing women stuff together because women you know we all know that women just get along with each other when they're in a room they just magically get along with each other they don't judge each other at all they're all sisters sisters sure <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen a simp cast? You know, you know what girls talk about all the fucking time. What they talk about on simp cast? Uh, plastic surgery. Boobs. Plastic boobs, surgery. Vagines. Vagines. Um, and it's funny because the last simp cast, I didn't know who this was. Chris Benoit, super chat, super chatted, <laughs> and he was asking for relationship advice because his wife <laughs> left and his kid was taken from him so yeah they uh, his <laughs> wife left and his kid was taken from him in like the josiah rises version of that story um and we didn't know it's a, actually a horrible story it's a horrible story it was like we went up for 10 minutes giving this like relationship <laughs> advice <laughs> oh, no. and um yeah i'm like Chad's talking about some weird stuff. Is this like a joke? <laughs> Bimbo yeah. power. Bimbo power. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible and it's funny. It's so <laughs> All at the same time. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, anyways. You okay, Chris? Oh, yeah. I just, it, uh, yeah, I've watched, uh, I watched Simcast. It's entertaining. There you go. But it, but it is like the same topics. It's, yeah, it know. is. Listen, we get bad here too. Yesterday on the real BBC, we talked about the Mattel Oppenheimer Nagasaki playset, right. <laughs> which is a box of ashes. And I challenged the Legion of Memers to make it. Nobody did it. Now, don't blame them at all because you would get just don't. Don't do it. <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. Uh, Gary, any chance you're going on uh, going near Northern Ireland? I am not saying rocks for two British pounds. Not this time. But we'll. So I was supposed to we were supposed to go to the UK right before COVID hit. So we were planning something, and then we had to give up on it because of COVID, obviously. So uh, I actually, <clears throat> going to the UK is something I plan to do like uh, regularly, like every couple of years, because I like it there. I do, especially that countryside. That British countryside is absolutely gorgeous. Fucking gorgeous! It's great. It's the Shire. I like Ireland more personally, but I mean, I want to go to Ireland. I want to. I got to go to my homeland too, since I found out it was my homeland because I wasn't really sure until very recently when I did the DNA thing. You know, because I'm adopted, so I had no idea what my. You know, I'm Scottish, so. Uh, bones, what is it? Bone saw is ready. Bone saw is ready. I got it. Bone saw is ready. For $10 says, today is a very important Disney earnings call and force majeure kicking in today has me giddy for what to come in the next few weeks. Burn, Hollywood, burn. Yeah, Valiant Renegade's doing a stream at, uh, did he say four Eastern? So that's three Central. I'm going to try to jump in. Mm. I've got some work to do, including, it's very important work. I'm. I'm dusting this room. That's part of what I, I it, it is fucking terrible. But um, I'm never doing this again. But uh, yeah, I'm almost done. Uh, Cornelius uh, uh, Bruniz on the Streamlab side for $10 said, what did Chris think of the 1960s Mexican Batwoman movie? Uh, my personal favorite part is when she battled the mutated fish man, LOL, true 60s cheesiness. It's a wonderful movie and the best Batwoman outfit ever. Right, Chris? Uh, yeah, the outfit is amazing. I've only seen the trailer. I haven't seen it. But I did end up picking up uh, the Blu-ray of it. There you go. So there you go. She is hot. Uh, Matthew Faxine for 
Canadian pesos. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. That is the manosphere. Yeah. Yeah, the manosphere. I, I, I do not require the manosphere. Uh, and, and I do understand that there's a lot of uh, men are being forgotten. There's a lot of lonely men out there. Uh, and it fills a void. I, I don't know how good of a fo- void that fills. Uh, it depends on the person you listen to. And again, I know like two people in the manosphere. There might be some really good ones. I don't know. I don't know. I think it just feels too much anger mm-hmm. and yeah. not no solutions. Yes, there's the, the problem I have with it is all these guys are super angry and I'm like what yeah. are you angry about. And then there's the guys that like they take it too far. It's like, well, you know, I'm not going to be I'm not going to just be with one woman. You're going to have to be okay with me being with a bunch of girls. Uh sure. Let's see okay. how long that works out. I guarantee I guarantee that will not work out for any length of time. So, and and a woman that would be okay with that, I I would not respect a woman so, that uh, was like that. So it's weird. So these guys they drift off into getting these like hyper insane egos. Where at least from what they tell you, they have these things happening. I think in real life, um, I prefer an equal partnership. Uh, people, you know, uh, egalitarian. Yeah, absolutely. Like, e- each meeting each other's needs equally. True equality. That's what I'm right. That's what yes. I'm all about. But right. I, but in the data sphere, we can oh, besides dad jokes, we can also get advice like going out and bragging about how much money you make is bitch made. Uh, right. And also don't buy a new car off the lot. That's some fucking stupid shit. You go buy a car with a little bit of mileage uh, one on year it. year at least. At oh. least one year. And by the way, and don't stick with one brand of a car. Each car uh, each year is made differently. Uh, mm-hmm. So, you know, go do your research and find the car that was made the best that might be a little older. You know, it's got 10, 20, 30,000 miles on it, but it's a more reliable car. Uh, that's the kind of shit so that we, that's the kind of stuff advice we need to give. And yeah, like buying a new car is like, like one of the dumbest things you can do. You, you buy a used car, buy well, a used car. Gary, you have stumbled on what I think is a brilliant idea. I am filled with so much useful information that will bore the shit out of you. Yeah. But and we should call it dad cast. Yeah. And <laughs> dad cast. <laughs> just call it dad cast. Uh, probably that name is kind of obvious. Maybe someone already is doing. Don't that. file zero on your fucking taxes. Don't ever do that on your dub. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like file one, okay? Because what you're doing is you're loaning the government money without interest. Yeah, you get that little tax refund at the end of the year. It feels like a little bonus, but you're getting screwed. Don't do that. Yes, there's so much little info, like that. I just like learn. Even if it's just like stuff around the house, like you know, I I, I don't know. Like just I'm just filled with all sorts of use. It's just from being old and doing things wrong and also wanting to do things for myself. You know, every time, you know, when you own a home, Gary, any time you need something, it's $600 or a thousand. <laughs> yeah. You come out minimum, or you can figure out how to put in a screen door yourself. It's not that hard. Uh, that's the best part about YouTube. I used to be obsessed. Yes, I a lot keep, of DIYs. I would keep all my instruction manuals alphabetized in a file. Oh. I have like these, processes that i've come up with that just like you know my place is always uh, it's sort of neat and organized not going to say it's always clean but at least organized and i can find shit you tell me you know i've got that i've got that or the types of tools you that you really need in a toolbox right if you're going to buy a set of tools and look you'll save so much money by it. Sam, oh. we're doing dad cast right now say, we oh, are we are is, when you're alphabetizing always... alphabetize your blu-rays alphanumeric Okay, alphanumeric. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Buy tools on sale. Just keep yes. looking through your Canadian on, Tire or whatever equivalent in the states. Go is. on Craigslist and look for somebody selling their tool set, especially with car tools. Like, there's or mechanics you, always moving, the and they're always place. like, but when they move, they sell. They could sell their toolbox, and and the mechanics mm-hmm. toolboxes are fucking amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah. And yeah, never like buy that. them full price. It's stupid. No, it's ridiculous. Yes. Do a little work, yeah. save a little money. There you go. Anyways, <laughs> if this ever becomes a thing, that's the datosphere. <laughs> uh, 
Darian Murphy for nineteen ninety nine. Thinking about the difference between Gary versus Ryan's Barbie take might be the age thing. Gary, when you and I grew up, girls were not the man hating feminists, but when Ryan was growing up, it was normalized. Yes, not, Ryan's a millennial, right? Mm-hmm. So it's it's that's why I said there. <laughs> it's a it's a film made for woke white women and or millennial women, kind of the same thing, and uh, and gay men. That's what it's made for. But uh, yeah, it, it's it it there was still there was definitely like man hating in it, but it was nothing compared to The Witcher, like fucking nothing compared to The Witcher. Uh, Drunk Chris Gore equals Frank Gorlock, the Destroyer. Also, didn't you uh, didn't you know you were from Detroit? I got a fa- I didn't know you were from Detroit. I got family family in Kalamazoo, Kalamazoo. Oh, I know where Kalamazoo says, is. Bone saws ready for five dollars. Yeah, I grew up in uh, Royal Oak, Michigan. Went to a high school that doesn't exist anymore, but it was uh, Royal Oak. I walked everywhere. I had newspaper routes when I was a kid, so I always had money. Man, I had four newspaper routes, and every day would walk twelve blocks delivering newspapers. And then, so I always had money. I bought a car when I was fourteen, waiting for the day I got my license so I could drive myself to the movies instead of begging my mom to take me to see, you know, Flash Gordon or whatever. Uh, so oddly enough, saw an early cut of Flash Gordon before it was released to theaters, and it was a complete. It was a weirdly different movie. There's like a super duper 4K awesome box set that I didn't. I it's on the way. I gotta get it. I gotta get. It's fucking rad. I am one six scales too. Uh, uh, that I got from Big Chief Studios. No, I think it was the last thing I got from them before they went under. And took all my money. Uh, Japanese did whatever. It's my fault. Uh, I'm I'm never pre-ordering one six scales ever again from anybody. Done. Completely done. I'll wait till they're out. Uh, Nerd Rotic, Geeks of Gamers, Ripaverse, Epicverse, Cannonball Run. When? Oh, Brent Wolf for twenty dollars. I'm glad you brought that up. I meant to bring that up. We are get. We got like four more left. I'm gonna get out of here. But uh, real quick. Uh, so Garrett proposed. Actually, let's go back in time. Let's go back in time to where this actually actual got in my tweet. head. No, Matthew Marsden uh, and I were talking about my uh, 18-hour drive from California. I don't know if Garrett saw it from this tweet, but Matthew Marsden said, I just did that from L.A. We should do a race cross-country. And I shot back with a Cannonball Run gif. Uh, fast forward to about a week later. Maybe Garrett like didn't get this i don't know but uh, he proposes uh, a couple weeks later he proposes a a no ball run a no ball run which i am completely down for so it's a cannonball run without cannonballs chris <laughs> or any uh, running anything and it's a race a cross country between uh youtubers we got a driver and a navigator and i am a thousand percent for this like i want this to happen i think you should be a part of it chris I just don't want to get arrested in the States, okay, if I am. Who's going to get arrested? I don't know, if you drive really fast. We'll get tickets. Some of us are going to get tickets. That's just part of it, okay? That's part of the deal. Arrested? I mean, I don't plan on, I plan on taking the roads legally. I'll win legally. I'll fucking win this thing well. There's parts (laughs) of the (laughs) country. There's parts of the country where you could get, by the way, like driving through Texas, no fucking problem. You can haul ass through the state. It's fine. Uh, it's when you get to the West Coast states, it's it gets lame, especially Arizona. Holy shit. Watch Lots out. There's guys. cops. Lots. There's speed traps everywhere. But if you have Google Maps or whatever your stupid I- Apple version is. Uh, it alerts you. The- and it now alerts you. And uh, You could also uh, yeah, get a can- radar detector if you want to go old school. You can get a radar detector. We're um, going to also get trucker um Mics, so we can hear oh, yes. about uh, the mm-hmm. CBs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be. I think we should do it. I think we should do it. I'm totally down. Uh, Japanese demon lord says real writers write for enjoyment and pleasure, like actual artists. If it turns into something, it's a perk. A lot of these WGA folks do it for money. Real artists aren't in it for the money. You are correct. There's a way to balance both. There's a way to be like, yes, I want to make money, but it, I'm still doing what inspires me. 
uh, and I'm not writing what I have to write or what I feel like I have to write. And you're absolutely right. There's a bunch of people who are not qualified writing for sci-fi, fantasy, comic books who have no interest in it, don't care, but they want it on their resume and they want the money. Hmm. Almost a grifter. Cage Phoenix for four ninety nine. Hail Gary, Chris, and Exodus Goo. Hey Gary, how's Stargate? Uh, it's all right. It's all right. Uh, ever think of having a meetup in Northern California? <laughs> I did. Uh, have a lot of fans in that state, in the state of Jefferson. Now, if it's in the state of Jefferson and you become the state of Jefferson, which I fully support, yeah. I will be in Northern California one more time before the end of the year to get my shit because <laughs> I have stuff over there. Uh, TR33 cutter or tree cutter. Okay, I get it. Duh. Uh, hey guys, love the show. What do you think of the chances are of Doom Part 2 not only to break even but become a box office hit this time around? I think I think it'll be a hit. I don't think it's going to get anywhere near a billion dollars. Yes. But if it makes like 500 million, I think that will break even for it and that would be good. Uh, but we'll see. Brent Wolf for $20. No ball run proceeds. Proceeds go to comic for, uh, comic for kids charity that drunk and Eric are partnered with. Sounds like uh, a neat deal idea. Uh, is that where the proceeds go? That's fine. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with them going yeah. to charity. Absolutely. I, I, that's where I figured they go. Uh, I am uh, absolutely for it. If we, ben, if we actually did this, we could do like a, a fundraiser, meet the goal to pay for gas, and then anything that's made on top is for... That's going to be expensive, yeah. by the way. Oof. The gas I'm, prices are... I was like, I'm going to take the FJ. I'm taking my FJ. It's not fat, but it's sturdy. It is sturdy mm. as fuck. Well-made car. Can handle a lot of shit. Well, truck, but... Uh, uh, ben Bernard Smith for 10 British pounds. Gary, have you ever seen any British puppet sci-fi shows from the 60s like Thunderbirds? Yes, of course. Stingray and Captain Scarlet. They were cutting edge for their time and still hold up. I think you'd like them. I've watched them. They actually showed them over here in the States. Hmm. They'd be on early in the morning on like channel like KTLA. You know what KTLA is, Chris, right? Of course. Good old KTLA. Uh, Nick Flagg for four ninety nine. Chris, I was in the Marines, and a while back, I want to commend your advice to your son. I bet he's doing well with that mindset. Raw, <laughs> he is. Yeah, he's on the leadership path. He's a, a sergeant now. Like I don't know, he calls me every time he gets an upgrade, which is an upgrade in pay. That's, That's why so I'm weird that you have like a, a jarhead son with the, like the nerdiest dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Well, I think some of the nerd stuff like rubbed off on him, and he's kind of a uh, he's sort of a comedian among his friends. He's the the he's a funny kid, and I don't good, know, just uh, not as not as I am more nerdy than my son. That is actually that is true. Fact. Uh, he's bo not as into that stuff. Bone saw is ready for ten dollars. Says not a fan of most of the manosphere, but I have adopted the mindset: you're strong and independent. Fix your own issues and stop complaining. I, that that part is right, mm -hmm. but that that can be applied to any human. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, right. I think the the lack of dads uh, is a problem. The diminishment of the dad. The diminishment of uh, I think. Boys and men are lost, especially if they go to public school. They're being completely ignored. They're called toxic. They're called the pro the blame for all the world's problems. Don't you, you don't think that affects a kid hearing that? Yeah. You know, whether you meant intend it or not, when you're saying that shit, that's that's the talk I had to have with Logan's teacher, right? My kid's teacher when she wanted a creative writing prog uh, uh, report on uh, on um, on white privilege. And I'm like. You know what you're teaching my fucking kid? Fuck off. Why well, wasn't my intention? I'm like, what 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 was your intention? But to make them aware of it. I'm like, why don't you make them aware of of writing <laughs> creatively? Not not writing an op-ed. Uh that's your op-ed. Him writing your op-ed. Fuck that shit. <clears throat> when it comes to women, my plate is full already. There you go. Oh. Not a boy. Well, bone bone saw is ready. Uh, CJJ for five dollars. Texas is full. Chris and X Ray are welcome, though. I I agree. Texas is full. Um, weed is illegal here. 
Uh, it's filled with Republicans and guns and churches. Uh, Californians would hate it. Uh, get you get YouTuber Ed Bolian uh, to assist you in properly getting cars set up. He has done several of these. You should raise funds for fallen police officers with brief visits to police stations uh, in each state, says Matthew Hammond for $9.99. And that's the last one. Thank you, Matt. Hey, uh, Garrett is coordinating this. I am simply going to be a driver. I, that's the part I like the most is I don't have to plan. I can just show up. Do, 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 do. <laughs> yep. Y'all want to be in charge of stuff. Y'all be in charge of stuff. I'm behind just kind of being a leaf on the wind. <laughs> so, uh, Chris, what you got coming up? Uh, live stream on the Film Threat YouTube channel, Hollywood on the Rocks, talking to a WGA writer and producer who's going to tell us the truth of what's happening behind the, behind the lines of the strike. So can't wait to do that. And then Alan and I will be talking movies and goofing and whatnot. And I'll see you in Anime Matsuri in a couple days, Gary. Yeah. I'm flying on a red eye tonight. So I'll be That's in right. Dallas. I'll be in Dallas for Normal World. I'll be on Normal World on Thursday. Looking forward to meeting Dave Landau and uh, hanging out with Garrett. And then I'll be at Anime Matsuri, I think, Friday. I don't know. Let's soon find out. Uh, yeah, you'll be there Friday. I'll be there kind of Thursday, but I'll be just setting up and doing stuff in the hotel. Well, hopefully, think. like after normal world, like we'll go there Thursday night yep. to get settled. I, I still got to talk to Garrett. Yeah, we'll hang out. We'll hang out. I'll, I'll be set up by then. I mean, we're, we're going to basically do FNT from our each individual hotel rooms. And maybe right. I, like drink will be with me, but the, you know, uh -huh. you could just do it from your hotel. It'll be, it'll be Wait, just, you want me on? Yeah. Me yes. All right. All I mean, right. It's gonna be a short show, but like, uh, they'll they'll be. I think there'll be plenty to talk about. But yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh oh, we got one more. Uh, Pred yeah. Preden Predineski for twenty Predineski yeah. uh for twenty seven ninety nine. Thank you. Hey Gary, Chris, and Exodagu. We're mm -hmm. a couple of months away from the Loki season two, but do you think it will stay on that same release date, or do you think it? it it's this is Marvel's last chance until seriously considering rebooting. I think it stays on that release date. I think Loki does. I think Marvel's could be delayed if the strike strike goes on. Yes. The Marvels, but I think Loki stays there. X-ray girl, what you got coming up? Thank you, by the way. Uh, I have poor choices tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern, um, where we talk about stuff with uh, relationships. We're not red pill, but we talk about stuff like that. Um, and uh, Baldur's Gate, probably after this, for a little bit. When More you talk about relationships, you could do it in like a mean way, and I, and really angry because people love that. Yeah. Do you think I can actually speak angrily? No, I doubt it. Not not consistently. I, I, if I get pissed off, I'll get pissed off. But that does. It's only happened maybe twice on the internet. Yeah. But, All right. Yeah. I don't want to get pissed off. Like X-ray girl is pretty even-tempered person. Yeah, that's why you have to talk about my friends or my family in order to piss me off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you talk about me, I don't really care. <laughs> that's so. why she does yeah. so well here. That's why she does so well here. Uh, thanks everyone for tuning in to the Nerd Rotic Nooner. We'll be back next week with Chris Gore. Uh, keep an eye for the antics this weekend from Anime Matsuri. Uh, it'll be interesting. <laughs> it'll be interesting. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, uh, we got, we got the drinker on Friday and uh, hey, drink Chris. drinker and Chris, and uh, it will be, uh, drinker will be at, uh, anime Matsuri. I think he's going to be on his way there next couple next day. I, I think he's, he's doing leaving tomorrow. He's leaving tomorrow. Okay. So thank you again. See you next time.